and he taught Van Vo a great deal about, you know, um, um, aesthetic principles with regard to architectural design. And especially when you make panels for buildings, the, 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 the aesthetic appeal that they should have. So that was a very important event in his life. He went to the academy and met them. And most, uh, most of the time at this academy, in the evenings, he did drawing. So then he never really got to doing, doing sculpture. The sculpture work that he did at that time was in the sort of under the tutelage of Villevoy. And of his very early sculptures, and I wish I could find one of them, it's called the, the Young Boy with a Falcon on His Arm. I've never seen it. Uh, I don't know if it, it exists, maybe it's somewhere in Europe, and maybe we can trace it one day and make a million with it. Because it's, it, it, it exists, but it's probably not signed and nobody knows about it. But one of the very early sculptures that he made, and it would probably look very much like this figure of the little boy with the, with the stick that he's put glue on and he, the birds come and they sit on the stick and he catches the birds like that. That's why it's called the bird catcher. Uh, the Fugelaar. And uh, then in 1882, when, he was, uh, uh, when his father left for South Africa, again he, he was in trouble. What does he do now? And then his uncle again got his work in Delft with a concrete casting factory. And they, did, they used to cast um, the, um, all sorts of things for buildings. In other words, the, the capitals that go on, on pillars, that sort of thing. He would model it and cast it. And, 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 and it's the sort of... Uh, uh, what do we call them? Old world concrete uh, 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 sculptures. That's what he did at that time. And uh, then, while he was working there, I, I can assume that it must have been quite a difficult time and it wasn't the sort of thing that he wanted to do also. And suddenly, he got letters from his father, who was in South Africa. His father initially, in 1882, went to Bloemfontein. And, and he was in the, the, the law department there, or in education, in education in, in Bloemfontein. And then eventually he, he, he left Bloemfontein and went to Pretoria. And he was then uh, uh, placed under uh, Dr. Lates, the, the state secretary. And while he was there, he, he, he had a lot of contact with the, the, all the Boer people at, in Pretoria. And he used to send Van Gogh, and as a matter of fact, all these photos still exist. They're in an album in, in, in the Pretoria Art Museum. There's an album with all these photos that his father sent him of words. His father would take photographs of the poor people and send him these photographs. And, and he was impressed by these people, you know, the sort of rugged, uh, uh, almost merry type of workers' class people. That was something that impressed him. And then he, his father said, but you know, your brother is out here, why don't you come out? They've established a new city in this uh, Kruger's uh, ZAR, and the new city is growing like a mushroom. You must come and have a look here. And you know, as, a, as, a, as a, an architectural sculptor, you're going to have so much work, you won't know, you know uh, 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 where to start and where to end come to South Africa also. And then in 1890, uh, his mother, he and his mother sailed to South Africa. They landed in Maputo with Lorenzo Marx at that time. They took the mail coach from Lorenzo Marx to Pretoria. And on the 1st of January, 1890, they were in Pretoria. And the family was united. Um, but uh, very important in, in, in this that Dutch background is the, 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 the general approach to art that we must understand that, that the main tradition in Holland was naturalistically orientated and academically schooled. That was the main thing. And that was what he was uh, exposed to at this time. So this was the sort of art that he thought was, was 
good art. If you work like this, you're a good artist. Yeah, and you, you, you don't push the envelope like Rodeur. You know, Rodeur is, is, is great, but Rodeur is taking chances. You don't do that. So this was the sort of tradition in, within which he worked. And, and when we look at Dutch sculpture at the end of the 19th century, we see it's very uh, strongly influenced by especially Thorvaldsen, who was a great classicist. In other words, the classical uh, model is, is so important. And when we look at the earliest sculptures that Van Vogt makes, especially the portraits that he makes, it's in that tradition. And here is, is, a, is a, a bust by one of the most important uh, young sculptors in, in uh, Holland at that time by the name of Bart van Hoeven. It's in the typical, it's a portrait of uh, Queen Wilhelmina. But look at the base. Can you see that base over there? If you look at the Van Gogh, I'll show you a Van Gogh work just now, you'll see. It's absolutely in the same tradition. The tradition that Van Gogh is working in. He, he cannot step out of that. And that's the one thing about Van Gogh that we must remember. Van Gogh wasn't uh, an artist that was interested in, uh, you know, uh, introducing a new movement in, in, in sculpture. He was interested in producing solid traditional sculpture. And that was that's what uh, in the, the tradition in which he worked all the time. And everything that he made falls within that tradition. Then uh, uh, when one looks at Bart van Hoeven and the circle within which Bart van Hoeven works, it's the mid-Victorian style that's actually the most important style over there. And it's also the style of all Van Gogh's monuments. When he does a monument, it's in the typical mid-Victorian style. You can almost take English uh, 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 monumental sculpture, and you can take Dutch monumental sculpture, and German monumental sculpture, and, and Van Gogh's monumental sculpture, and you put them next to each other. And if you, you don't know who the artists are, they all look the same. They, they're all within that tradition. He, they all, all these artists work within that uh, tradition. And it wasn't the tradition of Rodin. Uh, even though Rodin was very well known to them, because when Van Gogh went back to Europe, when he got that, he got a wonderful um, commission from Sammy Marx to do the sculpture of, of Paul Kruger for, for Church Square in Pretoria. So when he went back in 1898, he went to, he went to, actually in 1896 already, he went back to, first to Holland, because he, he had the idea he'd make the monument in Holland, but uh, the big trouble was there were no founders that could cast a sculpture as big as that in Holland, so he had to go to Italy. But in the time that he was in Holland over there, he often went back from Italy uh, over Christmas time, and, and during the Ju June-July recesses, he used to go back to Holland. And during that time, there was a very big, starting on the 27th of June, 1899, running to, the, to about the 26th of July, 1899, there was an enormous big Rodeur exhibition in Rotterdam, where his, his family was living. So it's without doubt that he must have seen the Rodeur sculptures over there. And being the artist that he was, he must have been influenced, and I'll show you how he was influenced by the, the art of, of Rodin that he saw over there. Uh, but before I jump, let's just go to the next slide. Uh, the, the, the question which must be answered over here is the question of why did he come to South Africa? Now, I told you that his father sent him all these photographs, and he saw these these. Boer, the Boer people, and he thought, wow, you know, he has an opportunity. And Johannesburg was founded in 1886, uh, so by 1890 it was four years old, and it was a booming place. And, and, and everybody knew that large buildings would soon rise over there, and, and, uh, but nobody guessed that there was an Anglo-Boer war in between. So, you know, he really realized that he'd become exceedingly rich as a, as a, 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 a monumental uh, or an architectural sculptor in, in, in uh, Johannesburg at that time because they had a clause in all the building contracts that
that a certain percentage of the, the, the money that goes into the building had to go to the decorating of the building. Uh, very, we still have it today, but in that time it was very important that that had to be uh, spent on the decoration of the building. And, and Von Bo knew this. And when he came to, uh, to, to uh, South Africa on the 1st of January, he came with his mother, and this is one of the earliest photographs of his mother and his father and him, uh, taken probably in around about 1890, uh, just after they arrived in Pretoria. And there you see his father and his mother and him standing at the back over there. And naturally, when he landed over here, he had to work and there was nothing to do. Nobody wanted to know anything about the sculptor and he didn't know, he didn't have any contacts at that time. So his father knew a Dutch gunsmith and his father then introduced him to the gunsmith and he then went and worked for six months as a, an assistant in the gunsmith's shop. Uh, and and uh, many people say, wow, what a waste, an, an artist working for a gunsmith. But I don't think it was a waste because he, he learned a great deal about the mechanisms of guns of that time and, and earlier guns also. And when we look at his sculptures that come later, uh, you always find guns uh, uh, shown in the, the Boer sculptures, and especially in the Kruger Monument. And so it's very important that he knew how these things looked and how they worked. So it, it played a role. But uh, very soon, he, he started meeting people in Pretoria, especially within the Dutch uh, community over there because they were a very close community and they used to have many concerts and things and Van Vo was a very um, amicable uh, person and he mixed, he, he, he mixed very easily with people and he loved food and he loved singing so he mixed with these people and, and in that way he met many of the people that were involved in the building trade On, uh, amongst others the very well known building contractor Maischke Maischke was responsible for about 80% of all the buildings that were put up in Pretoria, the, 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 the state buildings. So that was, a, that was a very important contact that he made. But he all, And through Maischke, he, he met other architects. He met Mr. Emley, who was, was a, uh, had a, 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 an architectural firm in Pretoria, and Emily was responsible for many buildings also not only in Pretoria, but also in Johannesburg. So that was another good contact to, to meet over there. And through Emily, he, he got to meet uh, some of the very important businessmen in, in Pretoria at that time. And you know, an artist thrives on wealthy businessmen because that's where their money comes from. And they, they, they uh, said to him, but why don't you open a shop? Open a studio in the city. And then, uh, around about June 1890, July, June, July 1890, he advertised himself as an ornamental uh, sculptor in the Paps, a newspaper in Pretoria, very well, a uh, uh, newspaper which everybody read in Pretoria. So he, he uh, immediately uh, attracted the attention of the, the builders. And one of the very important builders whose attention he attracted was Mr. Kirkness. And Mr. Kirkness was a, not only a very important um, building contractor, but he also had uh, a, 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 a brickworks in Pretoria where, at the moment, Groenkloof campus is. That was his brickworks. So he had this brickworks. He, he supplied the Dutch government with bricks to build their buildings. And at that time, he was busy erecting the old Ratsal on Church Square. And, and, and he needed somebody to do the sculptural work in this building. And here was this young man that was advertising his services. And uh, suddenly, uh, the, uh, Van Vogt was also introduced to Mr. Burke. Uh, Mr. Burke later became the, the mayor of Pretoria, of Pretoria, yes. And Burke was a... Was a a very wealthy businessman. He had numerous businesses, uh, shops and things in Pretoria. 
and, and, and Burke was at that time building a new palace for himself. 